In this session, we're going to talk about the active yield system. First off, I want to start talking about the physical components of the yield system. We have our moisture sensor up here. We want to make sure that it's clean, free of debris. Um, to check that, we can take uh, these two bolts loose, pull that out, we can clean that with a glass cleaner and a paper towel. The other thing on our auger, we want to make sure that that's free of debris as well. So we can take these two pins out, drop the auger out, clean all the gunk out of there, and put it back together. The next thing I want to hit on that does affect our yield accuracy is our clean grain elevator chain. First off, we want to make sure that it is tensioned properly, and that is done by uh, adjusting these bolts to make sure that chain is not loose from the sprocket, but can still kind of slide back and forth on that sprocket. We want to also make sure that these paddles are not rubbing the housing or bearings in any way and are not curved or broken away from the chain as well. Another physical component that affects the yield system is our clean grain elevator speed sensor. That is found on the left side of the machine, right down here. We want to make sure that it's plugged in and free of debris from the sensor. Another physical component that can affect our yield accuracy is our mass flow sensor impact plate. That is located here in our fountain auger. We want to make sure that there's no debris stuck behind that as well as stuck on the impact plate itself. We want to also make sure that this impact plate is not worn. One way to check to see if your clean grain elevator chain paddles are wore is to come in here with a tape measure and measure the distance between the paddle and the housing to proper spec. That spec is one half inch. On our active yield system, we have three pressure plates located inside the grain tank on our cross auger shields. They perform automatic calibrations. We want to make sure that the harnessing is not exposed and also that we do not step on them, um, otherwise they will break. Now we're going to go into how the active yield system actually works. The active yield is an active calibration that provides continuous calibration of the mass flow sensor through three load cells that are installed in the grain tank. The load cells in the grain tank estimate the change in the weight of grain as the grain tank fills, and then the AYM controller compares the grain tank load cell data to the clean grain elevator mass flow sensor data and adjusts the mass flow sensor calibration curve in order to minimize the error. So your load cells are your constant, and that compares the mass flow sensor data and changes it accordingly. Now you're not recording the load all the time. What an active yield load is, is it starts collecting that load around 2,000 pounds until around 6,600 pounds. So that load is actually only collecting over about 4,600 pounds. And that's from about the top of the cross auger shields to a little less than half of a bin full. And that load is going to be saved as long as the harvested crop is uniform uh, to support the constant flow during load collection. And you have not encountered any um, slopes, roll or pitch that is greater than four degrees as well as there hasn't been any interruptions with grain flow during load collection. So how the system works is you need to have 15 loads acquired first before it will actually start to correct that calibration curve. Some best practices to achieve maximum accuracy with active yield systems is to avoid those flow interruptions when calibrating. Uh, to do that, you want to start a long harvest run with an empty grain tank and you don't want to load on the go during calibration. You don't want to stop to get out and check something. You don't want to 
uh, stop the separator. Um, you also want to reduce the flow variation. Uh, so you want to try to keep that consistent ground speed as well as that consistent cut width. So target those constant flow rate areas first, uh, such as a long harvest run. You also want to avoid the calibration timeout, uh, which is 400 seconds. So if the system doesn't achieve that 4,600 pounds in 400 seconds, it will reject that load. Uh, a way, one way to do that is to increase the ground speed and cut width to decrease time to collect the load. This can happen if we have uh, some really low yielding crops. Majority of the time, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we also want to increase opportunities to get samples accepted. Uh, so you want to unload the grain tank soon after sample has completed. Like I said, it completes at around 6,600 pounds. And so if you unload, make sure you unload below the cross augers and that way it will start collecting a load again. Uh, as well as terrain, uh, you wanna try to target any flat or near flat terrain available. Like I said, uh, a slope or positive or negative four degrees, if it encounters that, it will reject that load because that grain can shift in the tank. It is what them load cells are doing, they are modeling the grain in the tank. And so if there's any shift, that's gonna cause an inaccuracy. So that's why it rejects the load. A couple things that we need to make sure are done in order to maximize our accuracy is performing a mass flow vibration calibration with the header attached and the combine grain tank empty. We want to run that as if we were actually harvesting the crop. So header at uh, the cutting height, we want that at full throttle with the header and separator engaged. And then we want to calibrate the moisture sensor temperature so that it matches the outside ambient air temperature. There is some potential for loads to get rejected. If there is inconsistent flow, if there's been uneven loading or grain tank sample shift detected, um, if there's the pitch or roll too large of a slope, and like I said, that's four degrees, uh, which is a 7% grade. Uh, or the collection has been interrupted, such as uh, unloading on the go, disengaging separator, um, whatever it may be. In order to use the active yield system, we must first enable it. And that is done by going to the menu in the bottom right, and then going to calibrations and procedures. Before we enable it, we want to make sure our mass flow vibration calibration and the moisture sensor temperature have both been calibrated. Then we can touch active yield. We can turn it on. Then under the calibration, it's going to give us the crop type, the accepted samples, and when the last accepted sample was. Below that, it gives us the quality. We want to make sure that we achieve four bars because at that point the system is using five or more loads to apply to the calibration curve. Below that is our sample status. Whether it's waiting for a sample or currently collecting the sample or if it has finished collecting the sample, it will say the state Below that is our sample status, whether it is waiting for the sample, collecting the sample, or it has finished collecting the sample, it will state that in that box. Below that is the sample status, whether it says waiting for sample, collecting sample, or finished collecting sample, it will give you an update on how the active yield system is currently working. If we need to apply a correction offset to active yield, that is done by hitting the arrow with a dot above it here in our header. 
And then in the correction applied, we can put our percentage, which is calculated by comparing the combine load totals to a known true scale weight. If you feel like the active yield system is off on a field totals basis, we can put a yield offset correction in. We have to harvest at least 15 accepted active yield loads first before adjusting the correction. If we adjust it before, it's going to be constantly chasing the offset values and provide inconsistent field values. The way to make this correction is we want to harvest and scale check five full grain tank loads and compare the combined yield totals to scale weights for the five load totals. Then we can calculate the difference between actual combine weights and measured weights as a percentage. It's good to repeat this a few times to get an average of the whole system in order to put a correction in. If we're low on the yield, we need to put a positive offset in. If we are high, we need to put a negative offset in the system. A couple of tidbits on the active yield system is performing a manual yield calibration will not achieve faster active yield performance. Active yield still has to achieve its first 15 loads in order to start changing the calibration curve. In order to get there faster, it is recommended to unload as soon as the active yield load has been collected. And this, that can be found on the active yield status page. The other thing about active yield is it can be retrofitted on most S-series combines starting in 2012 and on up. If you have any questions about active yield, please contact your local landmark CTS to get answers.